from New York City, it's The Cube, covering New Relic Future Stack 2019. Brought to you by New Relic. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is The Cube's first year of coverage at the seventh year of New Relic Future Stack 2019 here in New York City, and happy to welcome back to the program two CUBE alumni. So Todd Osborne is the GVP of Alliance as a Channel with New Relic, and Dave McCann is the Vice President of Migration Services, Marketplace, and Control Services with AWS. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you thanks again, for having Stoke. us. All right, um, Todd, let, 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 let's start with you. Uh, you know, quite a bit of a relationship uh, with, with, uh, between New Relic and AWS. I know we've had Lou on our program yep. at the AWS shows a couple of times. Uh, so set us up with the, the, the partnership and how it's been evolving. Yeah, it's been a, uh, an unbelievable partnership. Um, for many, many years we've worked together, starting with technology integrations. We've got dozens of them that, that uh, natively monitor a bunch of different AWS services. The most exciting thing of late uh, really came to life middle of last year when we started working with uh, a bunch of different folks at AWS that said, our, basically our biggest thing that we need help with is migrations. We, we know we have this massive opportunity uh, to, for more and more applications, more and more workloads to move to the cloud. There's lots of different ways in which customers, partners, and Amazon needed help in doing that. They brought us several different challenges related to that, and we responded by, uh, at reInvent launch last year, launching what we called the cloud adoption solution. And that really was how, um, a, 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 a process that linked up with the Amazon Migration Acceleration Program and use New Relic as the platform to help with migrations from beginning to end. So starting with the planning uh, phase of the process, getting the information you need to have a successful migration and design a successful migration, troubleshooting the may, uh, anything that may occur during the migration, and then post-migration, really helping to optimize the performance and cost of how that migration, uh, or that, that post-migration uh, optimization and run phase. So it started with that, it's really evolved, what's been really amazing, just since we launched last November, December at reInvent, the whole, we've seen a massive shift already, just in the last nine months, where it's not about just simple lift and shifts anymore. Almost all customers that are migrating now are also thinking about modernizing their software stack, running on containers, using Kubernetes, running microservices, which is New Relic's sweet spot, really at the, at the application space. So as we've evolved this, starting with migration, evolving into modernization, it's been an amazing partnership from uh, working with AWS. Right. So, Dave, migration services is obviously something we hear a lot about from AWS. Uh, every time I go one of those shows, it's one of the key stats that get thrown out. Uh, you have a very broad ecosystem. The marketplace, uh, you know, is, is the closest I call to the kind of the enterprise app store uh, of today. Tell us what's you know special and the, really the you know effort that goes together between AWS and New Relic here. So I think from a migration point of view, um, you know, we've spent a lot of time at AWS designing a migration methodology. Our professional services team, led by Todd Weatherby, is really delivering out a playbook directly to our customers on how to migrate. And also we've certified over 50 consulting partners who are certified to do the migrations. But all of the migrations hinge on a customer knowing what they have and whether they're going to migrate it. And so in order to fully know what you have, you have to go through application discovery. So if you've got a large server fleet and you've got four or 5,000 instances, you've got 1,000 apps, you've actually got to discover and analyze what you have and clearly New Relic's tool is widely installed. So they actually already have the visibility to a lot of the installed apps. So last year, we, at the end of last year, we bought a Canadian company called TSO Logic. And TSO Logic is a business case tool for building the business case on whether to move an application running on-prem, what would it look like on the cloud? So we need to have that data in the tool. And so New Relic's been a great partner, integrating New Relic into TSO Logic, so we can actually take the instrumented visibility that New Relic brings to the table, pump it right into the tool. And so the New Relic TSO tool integration is a great new mechanism that we have, and we just acquired TSO in Q1 of 2019. So that we're now giving the TSO tool to all of our solution architects and all of our consulting partners, and New Relic feeds the data right into the TSO tool. So that's a huge uh, a mechanism for accelerating migrations. 
Okay. Uh, can can you speak to you know how are you who and what customers and how are you targeting them uh, for for this solution? So first of all, customers are moving to AWS. You know, thousands of enterprises are moving applications. I think you have to assume that most most enterprises are moving to the cloud. And the question is, at what speed? So as our sales teams engage with a customer, the sales teams have a motion to discuss migration. We have a migration methodology. And so as we engage with the teams, the solution architect brings TSO to the tool, to the discussion. And that's happening all around the world. And we've trained our solution architects on TSO. And as we've done that, the second thing we've done is you know, New Relic engineered into Marketplace over two years ago. But we've launched a new capability called Private Offers. And Private Offers is where the customer, while they're planning the migration, may also need to license more New Relic, a new New Relic. And so how do we make the licensing really easy? And so New Relic worked with us on the, what we call the Private Offer Workflow. And that Private Worker Offer Workflow allows a New Relic sales executive to generate the quote right in the Marketplace portal. A new and AWS customer, and you receive that private quotation right in your AWS account. So not only are we business casing on TSO, but New Relic is coding through Marketplace. So that's happening into lots of large customers. Yeah, uh, you know, what, what, if you talk about you know, the adoption of cloud, we need to make it simpler for customers to move those. And the financial piece has always been one of the promises of cloud, but things like this private offering sounds like it helps accelerate uh, that simplicity and you know, reduces any you know, perceived barriers there are between uh, some of the software vendors and, and what you're offering. Well, it flows the new Relic software supply right through Marketplace, and more and more large companies are using Marketplace for software supply. And so New Relic's in there. It means that our sales teams are working together. So we talked this morning at the conference with Cox Automotive, the VP of Cloud uh, Architecture was in the conversation. And so Chris has been working with the AWS team and with the New Relic team, and we're joined at the hip as they expand their use of New Relic. And they announced this morning that they've now moved over 30% of all of the Cox applications onto the AWS cloud. A new relic's been to the center of that visibility. All right, so Todd, a uh, lot of announcements at, at the show, especially yeah. uh, you know the capital P platform, as Lou talked about in the keynote this morning. Uh, AWS is you know one of the largest platforms out there today. H help us understand how these fit together, both platforms as well as just the announcements in general as to how they work uh, with AWS. Yeah, I mean, well, every single thing we announced today had some sort of AWS tie to it. So, I mean, first of all, with New Relic One being the platform. It's open, connected, and, um, and, and programmable. And so the open part of that means that not only can we just in, uh, inject data with New Relic agents now, we, all, we now are on an observability platform that will take data from all kinds of different sources. So think of what that opens up in working with AWS and AWS's other partners and getting data from a bunch of different sources to then make the observability even better. We announced a logging solution. We're already connected with AWS uh, CloudWatch logs and, and working on some other new future solutions in the logging space. And then from a programmability perspective, um, we can now take what we have. We can write all kinds of applications on top of the New Relic platform. And some of the initial couple of, of, of the, uh, the dozen applications that have already been open sourced, one is a cost optimization play which looks at Amazon data, uh, both utilization performance data, some other sources of, of data that New Relic has, and then pulls in the Amazon cost data to actually look at, using in the New Relic platform, as a, as a free open source application, how do I optimize my costs in the AWS environment? And the second one, which uh, we didn't talk about too much this morning, but it's out there, but we could take some of the VMware data and some of the on-prem data that, that we have visibility to, to today, and help design that landing zone to help migra migrations do better. So it's just two really quick examples of how we can take data from all these different sources, program it, write new applications on top of it, create an awesome customer use case, and work with Amazon and, and uh, help with migrations and, and optimization along the way. All right. Dave, I'm wondering if you have any customer examples that might highlight some of the joint work uh, that, that's being worked on between New Relic and AWS. Well, so you know, we're, obviously I just mentioned Cox Automotive, and we stood on stage this morning with Chris, where Cox has said that they've now got 9,000 workloads 
under New Relic visibility. And so that 9,000 workloads is across hundreds of development teams. And I think Cox is illustrative of many customers that we have in common. Um, you know, we're, AWS has got thousands of enterprises, so does New Relic. I think you've said you have over 1,500 enterprises using you, so some large number. So there's a high overlap in many customers at this conference. And as we sat in the room this morning, um, I would say more than half the room held up their hands when I said who in this room is using AWS. Half of the audience here are AWS customers and New Relic customers. If I could maybe just add on the Cox story Please, a little yeah. bit, because I've been very involved with that one. The beauty of the partnership we have there was multiple, on multiple phases. First, Cox has been a customer of ours for a number of years, both on-prem and in the cloud, and as they've accelerated their cloud, we've helped a lot with that. What was great about that partnership was our field teams got together and, and actually really sat down and, and mapped out the migration, multiple migration scenarios. We had data on a bunch of on-prem stuff that was valuable to AWS. AWS was the standard in a couple of different divisions on cloud that we weren't monitoring all the applications there. So the teams really worked really well together. And then at the end of the day, we came together and said, um, there's a bunch of benefits for the customer, for AWS and us. If, the, the, if, a, if a transaction, the last transaction we did there, went through the marketplace, which was a, uh, a significant transaction that we did with uh, on the marketplace. So it was, a, it was just such a win-win-win that tied together the, uh, all the aspects of the strategic nat nature, ship of our, nature of our partnership. All right, so you know, it's clear your teams have been working close together, iterating and adding a lot over the last kind of year, year or two or so. Give us a little bit look forward. What more should we expect of it to, from, from, from this partnership? So the area I think I would talk about next that I think all customers are paying attention to is spend management. So you migrate your applications to the cloud, you establish a cloud operating model, um, we license out software through Marketplace, you're now running it. Uh, last week we have another product that I run called Service Catalog, and last week what we launched on Service Catalog was a new ability. Uh, Service Catalog is a library of templates, and those templates are launched as JSON templates using something called CloudFormation. And we versioned the templates, and what we launched last week was an integration between Service Catalog and another tool our customers have called AWS Budgets. So now what you actually want to do is you want to grant the team access to a resource, and on the tag of the template, you actually want to give that resource template a budget. So that is actually under an API. So there's an AWS Budget API, there's a Service Catalog API, Lou's team today announced a whole raft of new Relic tools, but one of the things that they announced was the ability to essentially build these new widgets using a React widget and pull data from other sources. So the next area some of the customers are looking at is for taking your spend widget and connecting it into both AWS budgets and service catalog. I don't know if you want to give us your thoughts on that. I already talked a little bit about it, but it's, 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 it's where we can go. Like, the future is almost almost uh, infinity right now, what we could go do together. We are trying to align to several of the programs that Dave mentioned around Service Catalog, Migration Hub. Focus on a couple different use cases of what, um, every migration has a bunch of nuances and every optimization story has a bunch of nuances, but how can we create the right applications, which are a starting point, open sourced, put, put the repository up on GitHub, and then allow customers and partners to go and fork that, do what they want, to match kind of a standard use case that may be 80% of the way there, but then it needs a little bit of tweak and a little bit of customization based on whatever that customer situation is. We've enabled the entire um, uh, community of millions of apps that are going to migrate to the AWS cloud over the next couple of years. We've enabled that with what we launched today. So the uh, the future is, is, is infinity and beyond. All right, well, Todd and Dave, thank you so much for the updates. We look forward to seeing what gets announced at AWS reInvent, which of course, It'll be our seventh year of having theCUBE there. Big presence. Uh, please reach out if you want to talk to us ahead of time and check out thecube.net, of course, where you can see uh, where we will be, including, of course, AWS reInvent uh, in December uh, in Las Vegas. So this is theCUBE at FutureStack 2019. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE. Thank you.